Hello everyone, welcome to another video tutorial for Hammer. In this video we're going to look at how you can use Hammer to use the simulation feature to understand your flight path in advance before you go out there and fly. So for the purpose of the video we're going to have a mock mission which we're going to try and simulate so that we understand how to work with the simulator, use the different options and therefore have more predictability in what's going to happen in the field once we upload a mission to the drone. So let's jump right in. So for the purpose of this video, what we're going to do is basically we're going to have a number of missions added onto the map and we're going to try and simulate them one after the other. So to begin with, let's assume that our mission is to create a 3D model of this site over here. To start with that, uh, what we need to do is go into the missions menu and we need to choose the double mapping option in Hammer because that's the option you would use to create 3D models. So once you've selected that option, Hammer's going to ask us to draw a polygon over the area. So we're going to draw a polygon over the area. Uh, if you're interested in the details of how to create a double mapping or a 3D modeling mission in Hammer, we've got a separate video for that that we're going to reference uh, down in the links. Uh, but, but for this purposes of the video, since we're focusing on the simulator, we're going to we're, going, we're not going into details of that. So if you tap OK, Hammer's going to generate a default flight plan. And if we go into the mission scare, you can then go out there and configure the mission. So you can configure the, the altitude you want to fly at. So you can configure the, the ground offset, which is the plane in which you want the overlap calculations, and a number of different settings. But once you've configured your flight and you press Done, you can now simulate it. So to start the simulator, um, ensure that your drone is not connected to the iPad and tap on the Play button in the toolbar on the right. So if you, if you tap the Play button, Hammer's going to ask you, uh, there's no drone connected, would you like to add a simulated drone? If you tap OK, uh, Hammer's, then, Hammer's then going to prompt you to pick a home location. So if you pick a home location, let's say we're going to, for the purpose of this mission, we're going to start from somewhere there, which is a parking on site, and you tap OK. Hammer's going to then essentially generate a flight plan and also uh, start the simulator. So it's going to show you what the drone is expected to do in the flight plan. And essentially really just show you the trajectory the drone will follow, the orientation of the drone at every point, and how it's going to go out there and take pictures. So one of the important things to notice over here is that the simulator in, in Hammer is not accurate in time. It's more accurate in functionality. So it's going to give you an accurate depiction of what the flight plan will be and also the orientation. Uh, it's also important to, to understand that uh, the drone may not follow the flight plan um, uh, exactly bang on the line because you've got wind, you've got GPS error, so, but it's going to follow the line roughly and um, the simulator gives you an idea of as to where the drone will start, where it would, where it would sort of end and what, what sort of orientations the drone will maintain throughout the flight. So one of the important things to understand about the simulator is that it's a really powerful tool when you're trying to configure the mission. So I can pause the simulator by going into the pause button and this, the flight will basically pause and it will give me three options which I would have in flight if, if I was flying in reality. So I could either uh, tap the go home button and the, the drone would climb to the go home altitude and go home. Or I could press the manual control button which would be if I wanted to take manual control. And I could also press the resume button if I wanted to resume the flight. So those are the options that will be available to you. And in simulation you can see them um, in action. So, uh, But let's say for the purpose of the flight I wanted to change something. So if I want to change the altitude um, if I change the altitude to um, 40 meters for this flight, I can see the flight plan has changed. And if I press play again, you will notice that Hammer asks me if I want to restart the mission. So let's say if I restart the mission, now Hammer is going to show me what the new flight plan will look like by using the simulator. And that's when it becomes a really powerful tool because you can um, simulate many different types of flights. So you can see all the different flight times might be like. So actually, you've got an estimate of the flight time, the number of batteries involved, the number of pictures involved. So you can simulate different scenarios and you can sort of understand what you, what, what you might want to go with. And that allows you to have a much better pre-flight pre planning, not just for the flight itself, but also your in overall op operation. So that's how you would use the simulator in Hammer. Um, and you can sort of pause the simulator. Let's, I can ask the drone to go home. And that will give you an idea of the drone climbing to the go home height and then basically heading home. Um, but one of the powerful tools about well, the simulator is also that you can combine many different missions and see the flight path the drone is expected to see. So, for example, let's say for the purpose of this mission, uh, we, we decrease the area of the site by just changing the the um, vertices of the polygon, and uh, we 
we also want to do a vertical inspection on the side of this building. So let's say we want to do a vertical inspection over there. So we would go into our missions menu, we would choose the vertical inspection option, and we would essentially uh, tap on the corners of the building to generate an initial flight plan. We'll go into the settings menu, we will reduce the horizontal distance to the facade. And once we've done that, we've now got two flight plans in the same mission. And we've got two different flight plans. We want to understand how the drone would actually fly this, given our start position over here. So once again, if we just hit the play button, the drone is going to um, figure out the best route to do those uh, two missions in the same flight, and it's going to combine them. Um, so you would see the drone flying and doing the facade first, followed by the, um, the 3D model of the site. Uh, but what you can also do is that, well, if you don't want the drone to fly through this particular path when it's going from one mission to the other, you can add an obstacle. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pause the, the flight and I'm going to add an obstacle in between the two um, in between the two missions. So once I've done that, I'll press OK. Uh, over here, Hammer tells me that the obstacle in intersects with actually one of the two flight paths. So I would want to draw an obstacle that is um, not intersecting with any of those two uh, so that there is a better definition of where, where we want the obstacle to be. So let's say there's an obstacle between the two missions and if I press play again and hit restart, how is going to generate a flight path that uh, avoids that obstacle going from one mission to the other. And this is quite useful if, if you are planning two missions in the same flight and you don't want to take a particular path, you can add an obstacle in between. But also with a simulator, you can see what the different flight path would be. Um, one of the other advantages of using a simulator is that you can simulate the flights, but you can accelerate the simulator to, to see, um, to see you know, in a very, very rapid way um, what flight path might be taken. So if you go into the options at the very top, you've got the speed of the simulator over here. At the moment, we're going at 1x speed, but if I tap on the plus, plus button, you would notice the drone starts moving really fast between the points. Um, it's doing a vertical inspection over here, going left to right, and going up and down in altitude. But very shortly, when it's done with that mission, it's going to go over, across, uh, around the obstacle, and into the 3D model, and it's going to follow that flight path, which is going to uh, also be done in a very fast manner, as we are now running at 9x speed but it's just a way for you to be able to simulate your flights very quickly as opposed to um, waiting for the simulation to finish and uh, you can see the different expected outcomes. So over here you can see the drone uh, so basically flying really fast between the different points uh, and then flying home. So that was really fast. Uh, you could probably run this at 4x speed or 3x speed, whatever's comfortable for you. But those are the different options you have in order to work with the simulator. Uh, you can also completely get rid of the simulator by pressing on the bin button at the very top. Uh, if you top tap on that, that's going to get rid of the simulator altogether. So you won't see a drone on the screen and you're only left with your missions. Um, and if you want to get rid of your missions, basically tap on the on the wand icon over there, choose the bin, delete all, and, and you have a fresh map to start with. So that's basically it. That's how you could use a simulator to be able to understand what your flight might look like. Uh, it's really a powerful tool when you're configuring your missions and you're working to be more productive in your operations. Um, I hope this was useful. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments section uh, or send us a question to team at uh, We look forward to hearing from you and uh, we'll see you in the next video.